back in the days reactive oxygen species was kind of like the major call like this is the cause for coral bleaching but now new studies actually found out that it's much more complicated my project we're kind of going back to the question what role does our as so reactive oxygen species really play and we hope to achieve this by using microsensors and a thermal stress experiment under the phrase coral bleaching, we understand the process of a colorful coral becoming white. So the symbiosis between the coral and the symbiont, so this is a phytoplankton which is able to, to do photosynthesis, is leaving the coral. And now humans are coming, creating climate change, increasing the water temperature. If it's getting heated, then photosynthesis runs too fast, so the balance is kind of disturbed. So then oxygen can be uh, transformed into different kinds of oxygen and these are called reactive oxygen species because they are highly reactive and they can be harmful to life. In my experiment I'm using a standardized thermal stress experiment which is called um, coral bleaching automated stress system and it runs for 18 hours and it, it's based on running a four temperature in individual aquariums. And additionally, I'm using microsensors. This is the positioning of the reactive oxygen species and oxygen sensor at the coral tissue. So these little things here are individual polyps. So the sensor is not above it, but it's touching it. That's super important. That's why the sensors are so nice because they really, like you touch the tissue and you know from that one polyp, the exact concentration that is produced. What is cool about the project is that we put together one side the thermal stress frame which is very quick and rapid and super extreme and then we take the microsensors which are super delicate and fine scale and very very precise. Even though RS has been studied so intensively, most of the studies actually like take water samples above the coal. The thing with the sensors is that you can actually scale it all down to one single polyp and say something about how this individual which is or which can be completely different to the polyp right next to it still after so many years of coral research people are not 100% sure when it happens and what it really causes and if this really explains the process there are a lot of things playing together and it's very difficult to disentangle so we hope that by using microsensors we get a little bit closer to that. <laughs>